Hello and welcome to CS264 Software Design. This is Lecture 8 and this is Lesson 4. In the last lesson we looked at stacks. We looked at the generic and non-generic stack class in C Sharp. And this time I'm going to go into a more extended detail and um, example where we're going to implement an undo redo system using stacks. Now you don't have to use stacks for this. Um, I've seen people use lists and, and so forth as well, but um, I just wanted to use a stack just to, you know, show how you can use a data structure, you know, in a really detailed way and, and how it becomes something that's at the core of the algorithm or the application that you're using. If you know, if you know your stacks or you know your lists, then you can do some really, really interesting things. So the first point, I guess. So um, Really, what I also want to do is I want to talk about undo and redo systems because I really want to start thinking about design patterns in this module. We've, we've, um, the reason we've been looking at C Sharp is to give us a lot of experience and a lot of understanding of how we can build object-oriented systems and implement them in code. And last time I talked to, you know, about about some of the advanced features, but now I want to start thinking a little bit um, about you know how we can think about design patterns and how, how they impact on our code as well. So do, undo, and redo operations, they're typical for kind of commands that you would see in drawing, editing, or gaming applications. It shouldn't be surprised to hear that there are standard design patterns that we can draw upon to inform our implementation. So just because we can co we know about stacks, just because we know about um, undo, redo, and, you know, from our, from our experiences in other software, and because we know about using C Sharp or Java or any other programming languages, you know, we we don't necessarily know the best way to do this and that's why you know we could hack up our own examples and i'm sure it will work just perfectly but you know a lot of the time when we do work in the subject and um, people will have done the work before and there will be generalized approaches and patterns of design that will help and i think um, i think uh, really it's a good a good time now to start looking at this so you could think about two approaches for example to managing undo and redo you could save the state of the application model every time it changes, or you could save the commands that affected the change in the model state. Then you can move back and forth through your, your saved states, or go back and undo the commands that you actually did. So with saving state, you're moving back and forth through history, revising states or revisiting states. So you need some kind of data model or data structure for your model that holds the states. When you're saving commands then, you have a model that contains a single state and a data structure that contains a list of the commands that change the state. So undoing and redoing the commands updates the model as does issuing a new command. So what do we know then about software design patterns that might help with this? So if there's two approaches, then it's not surprising that there might be two commonly used patterns. And there are two, one called memento and one called command. So I've included links to both references in, in, in the reference section below. We'll come back to them from a design perspective a little bit later in the course. But for now, the memento pattern, in simple terms, stores snapshots of your model state, and it's more system intensive than the command pattern because it's you know if there's a lot of if there's a lot of um, data in your model, saving lots of lots of versions of that can take a lot of space. But it allows rolling back to an early state really quickly and simply. So with the memento pattern, you don't have to worry about the commands that actually change the model in any way. With the command pattern, however. You know, it's necessary to have reciprocal commands to undo some action that was previously completed. So if you, if you have draw, you have to have an undraw. You know, you need to understand, you know, and have, have reciprocal patterns or reciprocal um, commands. So that means one-way functions that can't be done undone trivially using reciprocal commands, as with the momentum pattern, that can be problem. Okay, that, that can be kind of problematic with commands. So, okay, I'm going to come back to the pros and cons, further discussion of software design patterns later in the module. But for now, I'm just going to show you how you implement the command pattern approach using C Sharp and Stacks for the undo and redo. So here is the command pattern. Here's what it looks like. It tells us that we have a client, contains a receiver. We have some invoker that um, has a, you know, a, a bunch of commands that each can be executed. This is a generalized, um, you see it's an interface here because it's italicized in our model. And then we have some concrete commands that are realized from the from this one here. Um, and there's a state, and they, you know, we, 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 we um, extend um, or override the execute here, you know, as part of this implementation. And uh, we perform some action for the receiver. And so this is how it works. And we end up storing all of these. 
Okay. So, okay, we read it as follows. The invoker object co calls the execute object on a concrete command. So concrete command calls action on the receiver object and that performs the request. So command declares some interface for executing an operation. Then concrete command finds a binding between the receiver and an object and an action that implements execute by invoking corresponding operations on the receiver. The client creates a concrete command object and sets its receiver. Okay. Invoker asks the concrete command to carry out the request. The receiver knows how to perform the operations that are associated with carrying out the request. Okay, so we see more about that pattern a little bit later in the module, but that's a summary. But okay, let's get on to the scenario. So in this scenario, then, I'm interested in creating this basic application that manages a canvas that contains circle shapes. So the canvas is going to be implemented as a stack of shapes. Now, I could have used a list. I mean, I have done in previous examples, but I'm just going to use a stack at this time, okay? Um, and again, we've seen lots of different kinds of data structures for implementing that kind of um, structure. I'm going to use the generic class to do it. Okay? The data structures used, um, I'm also going to use two stacks to implement the command design pattern for redo and undo. Okay? One stack for redo, one stack for undo. Again, I've seen lots of different kinds of ways of doing this as well. So um, the data structures and how you use the data structures will determine how you implement the undo and redo um, operations. Um, applications that update the receiver having passed the receiver into the command, I tend not to do that kind of approach, okay? So there's, there's lots of nuances on how you might do this, okay? So this is a version of what I want to do. It's important to say that even with the guidance of some software design pattern, implementations can differ dramatically in terms of how the actual design is implemented. So it's about, you think of these patterns as guidance, you know? So what's important really is that the primary approach to the design is to manage a list of commands, not saving the data structure after the operation. Okay? So if I implement that, I would be implementing the, the, the memento design pattern. So my implementation with a simple output is given in the section, and I'm going to talk through it in this video. Um, it would be straightforward to update the application, I think, to add and remove different kinds of shapes. Also be fairly straightforward to build a command line interface that interactively perform the operations. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is show you the output first and come back to the program. That might be a useful way to do this. Um, so my program runs and it tells me that I've created a new canvas and I've got some method that tells me and shows me the canvas. And here there are no elements in the canvas. I've created a new user because we need to have a user um, who issues the commands. So here's my test. I'm adding four circles. So here's the command received, which was to add a new shape. And I've added a shape and I've, done, I've randomly created a circle. I've added a shape, created a circle, added a shape, created a circle, added a shape, created a circle. So now the canvas contains four elements. So I've essentially called the method that I used here on the canvas, and now I can see that it contains four elements. Okay. So I'm going to delete two circles. So I'm, I'm, I'm receiving a command called delete the last shape. So and that, it tells me that I've removed this circle from the canvas. So you, we're obviously, if you look at the list, you'll know it's deleting the one that's at the top of the stack, if you know it's a stack, not, not the 348x one, it's the 321x one. And I'm deleting another one. So now my canvas contains two elements. So now I'm issuing a command now uh, um, to undo the last two deleted circles. So I'm undoing, so this means undoing, essentially is instead of deleting, it re-adds that circle. So I've done that again here, another undo operation, and we're back to where we were again. So now I'm going to add another circle. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do another undo. So I'm going to undo the add. So now I'm back to three circles on the canvas. I'm adding another two circles. <laughs> okay, we see all the commands received. You know, and we're, this is about receivers and, 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 and acting on the receivers or executing. And then finally, I now have five elements, five circles on my canvas. So I'm doing twice, <laughs> another two removed. And what I'm doing is doing all sorts of tests. So this is essentially testing the different kinds of commands that I can undo and redo. Um, and uh, you'll notice as well that I'm trying to do some things that I'm, I'm, I'm issuing a couple of times to make sure that I can't undo or a command. In other words, to say, remove a shape that I've added, you know, when there's nothing in the stack or nothing on the canvas. So that's the demo. So there's quite a bit going on here. So let's see at first how we might work with this. It's a long one, so I might take a little bit longer. I may come back to it again in another, in another lesson, okay? So it's uh, my command, and of course you can go to the code and you'll see that I have one called my command, 
code here for you. Um, and we can we can run that just to verify. And it should run out of the box for you. You can run it, of course, you know, but this is the end. So and we'll see all of the, the same code that's included in this particular demo here. Okay. So I'm creating a canvas. Now the canvas is the receiver class that we would have had up here in our pattern here, okay? And that holds a list of the shapes, which is essentially the model. So, you know, creating this class um, really to hide how it's implemented, really. So, and we, we use add and remove methods. They're just push and pop operations, really. So that's just telling me so we can, um, we can have a look at that. So I'm using a stack, new stack, okay? Because we're working with stacks. And then, um, sorry, my comments, some of my comments just are not, not good here, <laughs> okay. Okay, so I tend to prefer the list classes because I have much more control over manipulating the data structure, to be honest. But, you know, as I said, we would use stacks for the, um, for the undo and the redo. I said I might as well just use a stack as well to hold the canvas. But it's hidden, okay? So we don't care how it works. Um, we have an add and remove, and that we could, if we decided to change the internal data structure to be a list, then we could still add and remove, and we would just have to work with and add and removes rather than pushes and pops here, okay? So that's, um, that's how that works. The canvas just tells me I've created a new canvas and uh, just tells me what the canvas looks like. Um, and this is a small, I'm overriding the, the string method um, which we default from, from, the, um, from the object class anyway. So all, uh, we, we've seen this already, so the canvas class. So if I print an object of type canvas, then you know, we get this method here kicking in and it prints out. And um, something that we would have seen um, like this. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to work with shapes. Okay, so here's an abstract class shape. And um, so that's easy. I'm just saying, here's the shape. <laughs> and I've created a circle class. And that's, you've seen me do this before. And I have a little method again that I'm overriding the two string here so I can print out what a circle looks like. You know, if it was SVG, for example, you wanted to choose, you could choose that or any other, any other thing, JSON, whatever you wanted to describe this. Okay, so now we're going to look at the invoker class, which is a user. Now let's go back up and have a peek at our, okay, our invoker class. Okay, so we know about the receiver. We now we're looking at the invoker, and the invoker is the user, and the user is essentially going to create some commands, and issue commands. So here, you know, we're going to maintain a stack of an undo stack and a redo stack for the commands, and I've got some, I've got some. Um, uh, Little ints in here that tells me a count of how many items are in the undo stack and the redo stack. And the reason we have that, of course, is so that we don't try to undo stacks because we are or, or, or redo stacks that you know that are empty and so forth. And so we're going to be really careful with that stuff. And then I have a way of um, of we I have a reset that's called whenever we instantiate this user and we create this new user. And then a reset just resets the stacks. Easy enough. Okay. So now we have an action, which is a because you know we saw this in the in the um, uh, in the model that we can we can execute some actions okay and so here's what happens when we when we create an action so the first thing we do is we update and do so we push the command and then we clear the redo stack so we save a command to the this is what happens when we do something you know so we save the command to the undo command and then the new command is issued we the redo stack clears and we determine the action from the object type. So, okay, so let me go down and have a look at the, the command first. So command here is command, it's from the command class. And uh, you have to have a do and an undo because this tells us what happens when we do something and what happens when we undo something. So every concrete command needs to implement this, okay? So here's a, 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 an add shape command and that's, you know, inherits from command. It's concrete command class and it adds a shape, a shape circle. So this is what happens when we do this. So that adds a shape, the shape to this canvas. And um, so do just adds the shape and undo removes the shape. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. Okay. Now, so we have a delete command as well. And that's, that's very useful because it's just another implementation of command, okay? So it's a concrete command class realized, okay? And again, this gives us, uh, this gives us um, 
deletes, this is what happens when we delete shape command from the canvas. We have a do method, do the command, and undo the command as well. So this is the undo action. So remember earlier we talked about the fact that you do need to have reciprocal commands um, as part of the command thing, because we're saving these commands. And then so when we, when we do a command, we push it onto the stack. And when we undo a command, we take it off and then just do the undo command. So back up here then to our user, and this user has an undo function and a redo function as well. And that, that's, that's um, these are the commands we want to do for undoing the operation. So what happens when we undo something is that we, um, and this just, sorry, when we, when we, when we um, execute an action, okay, the user executes an action, it takes a command. We're able to look at the type of action here, okay? So, you know, if it's an add shape, we, Command, have the, we do the command that's received, and then we do another command to undo, you know, if it's the delete shape. So we're, each time we get an action, we do something, okay? And then we have an undo, and that performs an undo operation, and this performs a redo operation. And all we're doing is we're issuing the commands or issuing the command that's or the reciprocal command. So that's all that's happening here. It's, uh, it's fairly straightforward um, in that regard. But, I mean, it does take a bit of time to get to... To feel how to how this works. Okay, so our main class then, uh, our, the program starts here, and this is the start. Okay, of the application, and this is just a random number generator. You've seen this before. So we create a canvas, we create a new user. The user can the user um, so with this user creates an action which is adds a new command. Okay, that's all it does is it adds a new circle command. That's all it does. Okay, adds another new shape, adds a shape, adds a shape. Then we issue another command to the user, which is delete the shape. So by, by doing it in this way, what's happening is that we're able to save the commands and we're able to then undo and redo commands as necessary. So then we undo, we call an undo for the user and this uh, to undo an action, another undo action. And we might have a redo action somewhere down here as well. Here's a redo action. So all we're doing is, you know, we're doing commands, we're issuing commands, and then we have we, we, we're indirectly I suppose calling that or invoking those those the, the, the do action on the command or the undo action or the redo action and that's it um, it's worthwhile going through the code and work, looking at the example running it a few times and seeing for yourself but it's a complex enough uh, setup but um, you should be able to get it what's really important is that it works and follows the design that's given this design pattern Okay, so we learned a bit about software design pattern that can be used to implement undo and redo in the same application, or sorry, some sample application. And we saw two different examples of how we might use the stack class using C Sharp, okay, and it's the generic stack class, okay. Lots of references for this here, you know, and um, it's worthwhile reading some of these. Um, we come back to these um, as, we, as we progress through the course as well, okay. Just wanted to give them to you now. Thank you very much for watching.